Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of Toka Turnback. I'm your host, The Frozen Stratos, and I'm back to talk to you about episodes 6 through 10 of Gosei Sentai Die Ranger. And man, it's th this show is really ramping up. I'm liking it um, with every episode that I get through. Uh, so first off, let's just dive right into episode 6, and um, we got the conclusion of Pink's story. Uh, it was great that she w like she was able to get get the Zords. She was able to accomplish that because a lot of the power ups and a lot of the things that happen have a lot more weight. You know what I mean? It's by virtue of the the power ups and the Zords uh, being introduced so so late. I guess I mean like. It must not have been late for the time, because um, now, like I said last episode, Zords popping out left and right, you know? And now it's it's pretty cool to see um, this slow progression. And we didn't even get to see the Zord combine yet in this episode. Um, she was given... Like, Pink was given a lot of focus, too. Normally, we don't get... Uh, I mean, then again, in, in Key Ranger, we got Pink's focus episode pretty early on. Uh, but that was when she got her powers. Now, I don't know, she feels the Pink Ranger for this series. Uh, I'm sorry if I... Excuse me. I'm sorry if I can't get their names just yet. I'm still kind of getting used to the show. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like she's an actual character. And the, the villains are finally... A little more threatening um, and that'll be expounded on in episode 7 but episode 6 right now um, pink feels like the most powerful out of all of them and that quest that she went on uh, to get the power I mean like suddenly she was in China and then suddenly the other guys were there too but that's fine it's just a location to get to but um, again I like how she really earned the the zords it was great and like she was the one that was able to bring it to the team like outside of yellow i feel like a lot of the characters bring something different to the team and she brings a lot of strength uh she's not the typical like cutesy um pretty girl yeah i mean she it gets to that point somewhat in the next few episodes but you know We'll get there. Actually, you know, let's let's uh, let's get into episode seven because you know I liked six, um, but I really want to talk about seven and eight because I mean if you've seen Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, you've seen episode seven and eight of this show. Um, episode seven, uh, it's just Red thinking about his daddy issues, and then suddenly, oh shoot, the villain that they introduced last episode. Um, who has both you and, um, uh, die powers, um, turns out to be Red's father. And th it's, it's this elaborate 6,000 year, uh, backstory. Um, and I, I'm surprised that it all kind of got concluded in this nice two episode sort of situation. Uh, but, uh, guys, guys, come on. Stop Star Warsing. You gotta stop Star Warsing. Like, episode 7. Like, the villain? Samurai. Black Samurai. And what is Darth Vader based off of? A black Samurai. Or black suited Samurai, not an African American or. Af you know what I mean. Um. So, it, it, it played out just like empire and then in in terms of daddy issues it, it it was really cool to see the master genuinely care about the well-being of red and the rest of the team because he went to go sacrifice himself in order for them to live now again i i, I really love this character just because like not only does he you know teach a lot of really good lessons he also like 
genuinely cares for them. And it, it he's showing a character flaw in that, like, he doesn't want them to go fight. He'd rather sacrifice himself uh, so that the Die Rangers may live. But, uh, you know, logically, it would make more sense that... Oh, no, I guess not, since he would be sacrificing himself for the others, but... Um, and he would be losing a lot of Die Rangers if it went wrong for Red. But um, at the last second, his last ditch effort was to tell um, Darth Vader that uh, Luke was his son. Oh, frick. I, I flipped out and I... Oh, it's... Because, <laughs> like... The, the parallel is just so easy to draw. Black Samurai has a son that he didn't know of, and he almost killed him. But then he stopped because he was his son. And then the next episode, he's like, hey, uh, join me and we'll rule the galaxy together as father. Or at least leave the Die Rangers so, you know, you don't die. Because he cares. Um, I don't know. Why, why did... Did... Was Star Wars out around this time? I don't understand. Because this is playing exactly playing out exactly like that. Um, oh, and I also want to, to touch upon... Um, uh, see, Darth... Uh, the Darth Vader character, he, um, he... He wanted the ultimate power. He wanted true power. So he obtained both you and die power. Uh, arguing that uh, the only way to have true power is to use, you know, find the balance between the the dark and the light, while um, Master Yu, no, what? Why would I say that? No, the, while the master, he was like, no, no, darkness is derived from light. The only way to true power is light not the corrupted darkness and like i'd always i've always understood you know uh the notion you know light versus dark but it's good to strike a balance but this takes an interesting uh an interesting route in explaining why the light is inherently superior to the darkness so i thought that was pretty neat um the effects were cool in their fight like they they did like the 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 bouncing around and ha hitting each other. You know the effects of this show are really hit or miss. But again, we'll get to that. Episode eight. I mean that was just Return of the Jedi. Uh, even down to the the uh, Darth Vader's master, the saw blade character, using lightning on on other characters, and you know Darth Vader killing him and sacrificing himself and. Again, they do a good job of power-ups because here they they manage to um, get the power of the previous Die Rangers because they couldn't complete their Megazord combination, but they've they've transferred it onto the Die Rangers, and now they could create the the their Megazord. I, I'm sorry for using the wrong terms here, but I'm a I started a Power Ranger fan, and <laughs> the, the the term Megazord is just so easy. It's so much easier. So, they formed the Megazord, and it feels earned. It feels powerful, you know? It's not squandered. And I like it. It, it was it was a slow progression of the powers, and it, it didn't feel like it was too slow. It felt just right. It gave a lot of time... For, for it to breathe, you know? Like, we feel the weight of the... And the show didn't... Like, it didn't need it until now. You know? It, it was a slow progression. And I liked it. I really, really liked it. Um, anyway. Uh, and, you know, Red's backstory of losing his father. I, I'm, I'm glad we're finally getting backstory for Red. I just kind of wish it wasn't too generic. Um... I, I, I still don't feel like he's the leader just yet. I feel like, you know, episode 9 and 10 proved to me that Green is the more capable leader. Because um, <clears throat> episode 9, uh, we're, we're uh, at a shot of, of Green. And he's, you know, 
taking care of of uh, pets at a shelter, and it's really nice. I like green. He's great. And then a peacock feather appears. Turns out the it's it's the the chi. It's the you know their energy source. Their de facto uh, power source that they draw from. Um, he gets contacted by uh, what is it like the reincarnated spirit of the peacock buddha and you know uh she's this beautiful uh peacock themed uh heroine and it's it's really cool like she and because she's trapped in uh this mirror monster who um just steals the he he traps those who are vain uh, who look into mirrors or reflective surfaces uh, and think they're cute or pretty. <clears throat> um, and I don't know, it was... A lot of these villains are pretty pretty villain of the weeky, if you know what I mean. Uh, in, in, in that their, their gimmick is really one-off. But they, they set these villains up as pretty pretty powerful pretty weighty like they're like they give decent backstory to the mirror guy they give uh oh and i'm sorry uh going back to episodes eight and seven like when when those new villains stepped on the scene when darth vader came on the scene they trounced the uh the 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 three screw-ups and it it felt like there was more of an organization of the uh bad guys to like it it felt like there was more to it there was more riding on their success um anyway back to episode nine um there was there were some like odd horrid smoke effects when he was just meditating it would just stay in one place superimposed on the screen but i guess we still kind of do that in toku anyway so oh, it's just horrid oh <laughs> Um, so, oh, yeah, for the first time, uh, that I've seen, because I've been introduced to just, you know, your standard run-of-the-mill Sentai that goes on every week right now, and whenever a building blows up, it's just like, oh, hey, yeah, that building blew up, but Mirror Dude blows up a building, and there's actual disaster going on. There are people in the streets that are hurt, and it's, I don't know, it was pretty neat. I never thought I'd see that. You know, it, it's always just a thing that crumbles. It's an effect that we can do in the effects department that's easy and fill up, fills up time and informs, you know, the audience that bad things are bad. Oh, no. Boom. But he tore down a building and people were hurt. People were like bleeding. And it was it was pretty cool. <laughs> I won't I won't lie. Um. And then when they finally defeat the uh, mirror, the mirror villain, or at least release them from the mirror villain. Um, oh, no. Yeah, he, he gets defeated. Uh, we're treated to um, the Peacock's backstory. And it like she's really cool. Oh, wait, no, no, that's the next episode. I'm sorry. Th these are all kind of blending together. Uh, just because I watched them in quick su succession. But, um, turns out she got trapped, um, 6,000 years ago, and, uh, she fell victim to, uh, the main female villain's, uh, tricks. Um, and for 6,000 years, she's had this anger, this rage, and this, this need for revenge brewing. And I like it. She's an anti-hero. Like she start like, there are people under the control of uh, a villain, and she just straight up starts to to attack them, because, you know, they're in in uh, a warrior shouldn't have as much sympathy, and they were saying, oh shoot, like, uh, the her time away, um, has really damaged her gentle heart and, um having green kind of step up and you know lead this episode it was 
it was great to see how he wanted he wanted her back like because they had a moment together where she was peaceful and she was just with nature but then she started trying to attack uh the female villain and she just had no regard for any um any wildlife any any sort of other animals it was um like i like her backstory i like that we're getting strong female characters i did not think if i looked this far back we'd have any but like she's she's been through some stuff man it's it's pretty bad and i i like it you know it's ah kujaku yeah that was her name um i like her a lot and um uh the episode nine made it look like oh no what if she's a villain which would have sucked because you know bad people are just bad like there's no gray area there's no in-betweens but we got a real gray area here and um it's cool that we're trying to ease her back into the light obviously we you know they defeat the villain uh with green leading the group he's the one that says hey guys aura change now and then they do it i what isn't red the leader you know it, it, ah. There are just so many unique things about this show. They're not necessarily unique. It's just different. Like, I haven't gone back and seen any of this less structured um, Sentai, you know? It's always just been, okay, we need, like, we got to fill the quota of transforming and then also taking down a villain of the week with a sword. You know, it, it's just been so cut and dry recently It's that it's refreshing to have such a shake-up. And, like, I don't know, maybe I should start watching uh, more of these older ones. Um, but ah, th this was really good. This was really good. I don't know if there's stuff I missed. I, I probably did. Um, but I overall, these last five episodes, like game changing and it's weird to say since this is so old it it built the game really oh now 40 years ago the game was built it's just that this is it's it's refreshing not to be bogged down by it, it's it's just not modern tokusatsu it feels like this is what it should be you know and what what modern tokusatsu right now is more just like a product churned out by a company i mean to be fair we've had great stories we've had gaim we've had kyoryuger so modern tokusatsu has its place and i feel like the strength in this show is that yeah they fill the quota of villain of the week but they, it doesn't feel like it. The same thing about Gaim. We had a villain each week that they had to destroy. But, like, you know, they filled the quota, but it didn't feel like we were filling quotas. It felt like it was necessary to the story, necessary to the plot. And it's refreshing to see that again. Um, not many shows do that. The only other one I can think of off the top of my head uh that did that was kabuto um there was always a villain of the week but sometimes you wouldn't really you couldn't really tell because the plot was just going on and you know defeating a villain was just defeating i it was it, it felt important you know when a main villain got taken down there was no like i mean it 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 to its benefit, the uh, the larger threats in Kavito did have, you know, no real lines to say or anything. But that's besides the point. Um, this show is great. This show is really good. And I'm excited to to get to episodes 11 through 50. Like, I, I probably, um, if I was just watching this, I'd probably have just watched those already. But since I have to record this... Um, I, I wanted to document this before I got into 11 and 15, so I didn't have to, you know, um, 
I, I really like this show. I like the show a lot. Um, I'm glad I, I started this watch. Uh, anyways, um, that's about it on this debrief. I don't really want to get into the characters too much because I feel like I, uh, I, I did... I highlighted those that really stood out. We didn't get much of Blue. And, like, is it bad of me to not really remember who Yellow is at this point? Because, like, he's been doing nothing, which sucks because he, he has the drunken fist. And I like I like his, his fighting style. So I want to see more of him, but it looks like next episode is somewhat of a Blue focus. So hopefully after that we'll get into, you know, some more Yellow backstory. Anyway, uh, guys... Thanks for listening. If you want to um, comment down below, tell me what you liked about the episodes. If you're watching along, if you've seen it already, uh, what you think about my opinions. Um, leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, and uh, subscribe if you want to hear more from us, more from the uh, Go Mango Network each week. We're bringing back the uh, Toku cast in a big way. Actually, by the time this goes up, we've brought back the Toku cast. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you later. See ya.